Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice the radio, so today we need to take a look at a deck which is, I want to say, making a comeback. But I'm not entirely sure if making a comeback is a correct way to phrase it, because I'm not entirely sure it was ever really here in the first place. I'm talking, of course, about Hasui and Zoroark. And I say, of course, because if you've been following the videos on this channel over the past week or so, where we've been talking about the Stellar Miracle metagame, what will be the Stellar Crown metagame in the West, you will have noticed that there is one card that I've been talking about over and over again. I put it number one on my top 10 cards of the set video, which I then put the wrong name on and completely torpedoed the views on, which is really annoying. But hey-ho, you can't win them all. But the card I put number one for the few of you that did watch it was Area Zero Under Depths, which of course lets you have eight bench Pokemon just so long as you've got a Terra Pokemon in play. And I told you that one of the Pokemon this is really helping is Palkia, Origin Form Palkia V-Star that has an attack dependent on the number of bench Pokemon you and your opponent have. Well, not doing as well, but absolutely here, and being relevant, and being legit, we've got Hasui and Zoroark V-Star, who of course has the attack Tickling Curse. 50 damage for each of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. Well, hang on a second. Seems like the kind of thing that could be super useful with Area Zero Under Deaths. If you get 8 bench Pokemon with damage on... That's 400 damage. That's more than you ever... That's like 70, 60 more than you'll ever really need. 340 is a maximum natural HP we've seen in the game so far. So you don't even need like 8 bench... Po Honestly, like 6 will do fine. Most of the time, 6 will do fine. You might need a 7th. But you've got 9 Pokemon here. And that is what makes this absolutely great. And absolutely legit. And I adore this. It's actually a real deck now. Now, of course, with Area Zero Wonder Depths, you will need a Terrastal Pokemon to actually use it. And obviously here, we're going for Terrapagos, yeah? You, you, you all figured that one out, I'm assuming. Terrapagos is a basic Pokemon that attacks for colorless energy. And bearing in mind, we're going to be using Double Turbo here, which actually reduces the amount of damage you do by 20. Not terribly relevant for... Hasui and Zoroark, honestly, because six damage Pokemon, you go from 300 down to 280. Well, that's the key number for getting V-Stars. And seven damage Pokemon, you go from 350 down to 330. And there are a few 340 HP Pokemon around, but not many. Most of the time, 330 will be enough. So you're not too worried about the double turbo. And if you want basic Terra Pokemon and you're playing double turbo energy, we'll... Terrapagos is, is just perfect here. And Terrapagos has a very useful attack. For 2 energy, 30 damage for each of your bench Pokemon. No, it does not have the damage cap of Hasui and Zoroark. But it's also a basic that doesn't need evolution. If you run out of Hasui and Zoroark, it takes 2 turns to get rolling. You have to play, wait, and then evolve. This will get it going nice and easily. You're never using the second attack. That's irrelevant. But here it's just a case of giving you a basic option while also turning on Area Zero Under Deaths. But there are some weird things about this deck that we need to talk about. One of the things that we see played as at least a 2-2 in all of the lists that I've seen so far, Dodrio. And I'm willing to bet, and again, as always, please correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong here. I'm willing to bet most of you have forgotten about Dodrio. But it's perfect for this deck. Once during your turn, you may put one damage counter on this Pokemon if you do draw a card. Now, as a draw engine, it's fine. One card per turn per Dodrio is not great. But it is a Pokemon that will easily damage itself. And the reason we've all forgotten about this is by the time this came around in 151, we'd all already given up on Hisui and Zoroark as a deck. But now that Hasui and Zoroark becomes viable again, this Dodrio is nuts good. Absolutely love it. Another super interesting thing about this deck is that now I've seen lists with a bunch of different A-Specs being played. 
but secret box is being played in a bunch of them. Remember, at the moment, we're in that situation where there's no big or medium tournaments in Japan. We've got lots and 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 lots of little events happening all over Japan all the time. And this is still a fringe deck. Let's be clear, this is not one of the big decks in the format, and I am not pretending that it is. But I absolutely am pretending that it is a viable deck in a way that it's almost never really been before. Now, one of the great things that Secret Box does is it lets you search your stadium, bearing in mind how important Area Zero Under Depths is to your strategy. Also gets you an item card, a tool, and a supporter card, which is great. But it's a stadium here which is the most good. Of course, one of the things that we will see in a lot of these decks, but not all is a new chorus card now the new chorus card is actually brilliant in this deck absolutely brilliant now of course i'm talking about chorus's tenacity and it lets you search for an energy in a stadium card well that gets you your double turbo and it gets you your area zero under depths which is phenomenal but then the problem is it makes you really, really, really vulnerable to Kyurem. So when we see it played, it's, it's generally played as a one-off. It sucks, but unfortunately you, you can't make the most of it because of how vulnerable you are to Kyurem if you do. Bit sad? Yes. But what can you do? We also see Rotom, the new fan Rotom, getting a bunch of play here because it can only be used once and it can only be used on your first turn of the game, which is not ideal. But it lets you search for three basic Pokemon that are colorless with 100 or less HP. It's phenomenal for getting your Dodrio set up. Also leads very, very well into Knockdowl, that when you evolve into it, lets you go and search for two trainer cards, which is obviously brilliant. So, they're not all playing Knockdown, some of them are. They are all playing Dodrio, obviously. So, Fan Rotom is obviously great, and I'm seeing it in all of this. Even when we're only playing Dodrio and not Knockdown, it still sees play in there as well. Now, our old friend Gengar is obviously a very important part of the deck, because Gengar allows you to bench it from the discard pile and whack free damage counters on. It's, it's clearly great. Puts a damage Pokemon onto your bench from the discard, and it's actually even better here, because Area Zero Under Depths is going to get replaced. It's either going to get replaced, or your opponent's going to play a Lost Vacuum, or it, it's going to leave the board in some regard. It's going to go away from the board. And when that happens, you're going to be left with five bench spaces, not eight. But essentially what you do here is you try and have free Gengar down, your opponent replaces or otherwise gets rid of the stadium, you discard your free Gengar, and then when you get Area Zero Under Depths, you open up three more bench spaces, re-bench your Gengar, and it means, unlike a lot of decks like this, you're really not worried about losing the bench spots when your opponent gets rid of the stadium, because Gengar will just come right back and is absolutely brilliant. And speaking of things which are absolutely brilliant for this deck, Damage Pump is obviously great. Let's you move two damage counters from one of your Pokemon to your other Pokemon in any way that you like. And bearing in mind we've got Gengar and we've got Dodrio here, both of which will allow you to essentially get free damage counters. Or, well, either one or three for no investment, there we go, onto the board. So you're, you're pretty much always going to have a target for damage pump. It's always going to work. And with Dodrio, you can just move the damage off and then use it, you know, use the ability one turn. Next turn, damage pump it off and just reuse the ability. Boom, you're sorted. Get the damage on there. Obviously, this works beautifully. And that's why this deck is working so well nowadays. We've got a lot more options. You know, things like Dodrio coming around is brilliant. Things like Fan Rose on to help get Dodrio is brilliant. And, you know, Secret Box as an ace spec is great. There's not all playing that, incidentally. Prime Catcher is still a phenomenal option for gusting and KOing the Pokemon you really want to from your opponent. And Reset Stamp, because you're going to be giving up prizes like every deck does. But also, you can set up here, so you've got a Pokemon hitting for like 300 to 400 damage. 
So recess dump your opponent down to two cards, and you will be one hit KOing everything. Not every deck does that, but after a reset stamp, you can literally just sit there one hit KOing everything and daring your opponent to draw out of it. And if they don't, you lose. Well, they lose. You win. Jobs are good un. Couple other cards which are worth pointing out here. Squawkabilly tends to jump up in this deck quite a bit. And I've seen some lists that are going pretty aggressively into Carmine. And the deal here is essentially, firstly, you need to get set up super quickly. Secondly, you need to make sure that you're getting your Gengar at least into the discard pile nice and early. So both Squawkabilly and Carmine have aggressive early game, you know, turn one discard and then draw a bunch of abilities and that's what we're looking for here to get set up nice and quickly here's a selection of deck lists from pokercart underscore book over on twitter we got the first one here which is just playing heavy dodrio line this is the one with four carmine in and secret box second list here we can see that we're not playing carmine anymore but we are playing knockdown for a little bit of extra consistency with reset stamp as your a spec of choice here but a lot of the rest seem in exactly like we might imagine here is your third list which is actually playing luminous energy so you technically could use a second attack on terapagos you almost never will but it's an option uh plus we've got pheasant dipty and radiant charizard as a fun side note the only one of the lists we're seeing here that is even playing any radiant pokemon but Radiant Charizard is just a good single energy when the late game. Basic attacker. See, you see where they're going with this. With Secret Box as your ace back. And then the final list here is playing Prime Catcher and a whole bunch of different energy because they're actually doing something that the rest are not doing. And I thought we would talk about this very quickly at the end. They're going the Glass Trumpet route. Glass Trumpet lets you attach an energy to two benched colorless Pokemon. So here, rather than using the more traditional double turbo, they're hoping they can use Glass Trumpet to essentially accelerate the energy. And then once you accelerate one energy onto a Hisuian Zoroark, you only need to attach one from your hand and you're golden. This can also incidentally use Terrapagos' second attack. The one that gives you immunity to basic non-colorless e Pokemon. It's fun, but again, I, I don't think it's the point of the deck. But just to let you know, a couple of the lists here do open up that option. So there we go. Weird deck, fun deck. Is it 100% the best deck in the format? No. Is it better than it's ever been and you're legit now? Yeah, I think it is. But now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about this deck in the comment section. Are you taking it seriously? Go nuts, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely Ashley Munns, who's been a supporter of ours for a while now and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always. Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.